Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson in this course. So today I am going to talk about another useful tool which you can use to write and run your Python programs. And that is known as the Jupyter Notebook. It's a very popular interface uh, which is used to write uh, or develop Python solutions for different data science projects. So let's look at what is this Jupyter Notebook. So basically it's a, a client server application uh, which allows you to edit and run different notebook documents via a web browser. And these notebook documents are nothing but the Python code along with its output. So that forms a Jupyter Notebook. It started as a Python only format so it only supported the Python code format, but later on it supported a large number of programming languages. So as I speak, uh, there are around 40 languages which are now supported by the Jupyter Notebook. It is useful as a development environment combined with code execution, rich text, mathematics, plots, and rich media. So there's a lot which you can do in this development environment. Now, how can uh, you use this Jupyter Notebook, right? So it can be easily installed using the Python's package manager, which is known as pip, right? So using PIP, we can run the Jupyter Notebook and you just need to run a simple command, which is PIP install Jupyter. Now pip is by default included in your Python binary. So if you have installed Python, on your Windows or Linux machine, pip would already be available in your machine, right? So if you have not installed Python, just follow my last video where I have already showed you how you can install and run a simple Python program from your command line or a text editor. So let's see how we can start, uh, install and start running the Jupyter Notebook from our Windows machine. So right now I am uh, in my command prompt, right? And as I told you, we need to run the pip install Jupyter command, right? But first let's check whether pip is installed on our machine or not, right? So just type PIP and just hit enter and you will see all the different commands which are present. So that confirms that pip is already present in our machine, right? Now we'll say pip install Jupyter. And it will start downloading the Jupyter binaries, right? And it will install it on your machine. So that's all you need to do in order to install the Jupyter Notebook. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so once uh, this installation is complete on the command line, now the next step is to launch the Jupyter Notebook. So you can just type it in the command line. So type Jupyter notebook hit enter and that should ask you to choose which browser you want to open this notebook with right so this is how your Jupyter notebook would look like once you choose a particular browser and open it it looks similar to a web page but it is hosted on your local host and on a specific port so here you'll find all the notebooks which you have created using the Jupyter notebook on a specific language like Python or if you're trying to use any particular language right now there are two ways to view any particular notebook either you can upload an existing notebook right and you can open it here or you can create your own new notebook using the Jupyter right so here click on new and then it will list down all the Python versions or the kernel which is associated with that version which you can use to write different python programs right so here i have installed python 3 so it is showing me that python 3 with the ipy kernel right so once you click on that it will open up a new page and on this new page you will find different cells where you can write your own python programs and also execute them so your lines of code for your program and the output would all be present in this particular notebook right 
now all the execution happens with the help of kernel right so the python kernel is nothing but a server where your python code is executed okay so you can stop restart or just run the cells within this notebook and that will be run inside the kernel right so here you will find there is a button to restart the kernel you can also stop the kernel right or you can uh, restart the kernel and rerun the whole notebook as well okay so here um, all these different blocks right this block is known as a cell and here you can write some python code so let's see how we can do that so i'll just print um, something called hello world right and once you write this code you can go to this run command and there you can see run cell so the output will be printed below that line of code right so similarly you can print or you can write any particular line of code and execute it uh, in python okay now apart from that you can also write um, simple to very complex python programs right so let's see um, how a multi-line program would look like in this notebook right so it's just like any other id where you type your uh, lines of code and then execute it okay so here uh, what i'll do is um, i will try to add two numbers right so let's start with num1 equals to 5 and num2 equals to 4 and then i will add them and store it in a variable so i'll say num1 plus num2 right and then i will try to print it down okay so i'll say print up sum so this is a very simple representation of a python program which is trying to add two numbers obviously you can write any complex or any number of lines of code uh, present in your programs right so click on run and that will give you the sum of two numbers it will be the output right so that's the cell 2 similarly you can um, have any number of cells with any lines of code right and that can be shared across any of your team members as a document so that's the purpose of jupyter notebook where you can create different notebooks and you can share it um, across your team or any anybody else um, on the internet now there are uh, lots of other things which you can do with the jupyter notebook but we would not be uh, digging right into that right because i'm going to use uh, intel j idea for this particular course where we'll be uh, building our selenium framework along with python so we'll learn more concepts of python uh, along the way while we are building this framework